Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today we will be seeing about enamel hypoplasia. Enamel hypoplasia uh, is an incomplete or defective formation of the organic enamel matrix of the teeth. So basically we have two types, uh, hereditary type and environmental type. Hereditary is the ectodermal disturbance which occurs during the embryonic development. So basically uh, it has three types. Uh, that is hypoplastic which is like defective formation of organic matrix and hypocalcified which is uh, defective mineralization of the matrix and hypomaturative hypomaturative where there is defective maturation of the matrix and the second category is the environmental one this is caused by the environmental factors that cause damage to the enamel cells. So either deciduous or permanent teeth are involved and sometimes a single tooth. Here both the enamel and dentin are involved in varying degree. Okay, So hyperplasia results only if the injury occurs during the time that the teeth are developing or more specifically during the formative stage of enamel development. So only during the calcification or formation stage if something happens or the environmental factors affected the hypoplasia will result in so after the calcification no such defect can be produced so in environmental factors we have uh, almost eight categories one is due to the nutritional deficiency such as uh, vitamin d uh, in rickets hypoplasia due to the exanthematous uh, diseases such as rash then syphilitic hypoplasia, hypoplasia due to hypocalcemia, hypoplasia due to the birth injury, Turner's hypoplasia which commonly affect one tooth and the fluoride that is dental fluorosis and tetracycline hypoplasia. So uh, this video is basically about two hypoplasia that is one is Turner's, Turner's hypoplasia and the next one is syphilitic hypoplasia because those two are very commonly asked uh, short notes one is turners and syphilitic hyperplasia because it has got more features so only questions will be asked when there is something to write in detail so turners and syphilitic has more features to write so these are very commonly asked short notes so we'll directly go to the turners hyperplasia first Turner's hypoplasia which is also known as Turner's tooth. So question might be asked as Turner's tooth. Turner's syndrome is a different one. Okay, don't get confused. Turner's tooth or Turner's hypoplasia. So this is uh, basically a localized type of hypoplasia caused by the local infection or trauma. The two causes. Either it could be due to the local infection or due to trauma okay uh, so the local infection first we'll take the local infection case where if the deciduous teeth okay suppose we have a deciduous teeth this is our deciduous tooth and we have a permanent tooth uh, coming here okay this is slowly emerging this is the gum and we have the deciduous tooth so if local infection, if uh, the tooth, that is our deciduous tooth is caries, if it has got caries, so this is caries, involving caries, what happens is, it will affect the succeeding permanent tooth, which is under formation, okay. So then there is spreading of bacterial infection, okay. So this is deciduous tooth, and this is permanent tooth so the spreading of bacterial infection to the permanent tooth that is a tooth bud which results in uh, disturbance of the ameloblastic layer of this tooth bud okay so this is almost like a bud which is erupting and it will expose the crown so this will disrupt the ameloblastic layer of permanent tooth bud which results in hypoplastic crown so that is the local infection so when uh, there is an infection in the deciduous crown so there are high chances if it is not treated properly there are high chances 
the upcoming permanent tooth will be hyperplastic because of this bacterial spread and affecting the ameloblastic layer okay so that is the role of local infection now what is the role of trauma similar scenario we have this deciduous tooth and the upcoming permanent tooth so what happens is when deciduous tooth have been driven into alveolus okay so something happens and if trauma happens to this tooth and if it have disturbed the permanent tooth but if it disturb permanent tooth but by any cause if it is an intrusion or a surgical uh, uh, some problem happened if anything happened for the ta- the but of the permanent tooth which is yet to be erupted what happens is again there will be disruption in the ameloblastic layer so which results in yellowish or brown stains on the enamel so most commonly the turner's tooth is seen on the permanent premolars so only premolars are there there is no need of permanent or deciduous so premolars because the molars the deciduous molars are the most commonly caries involving teeth in deciduous dentition so the permanent successors are premolars so that is why premolars are most commonly affected so that is turner's hypoplasia or turner's tooth due to local infection or trauma there is hypoplasia on the permanent teeth that is most commonly the premolars so this appearance uh, most commonly ranging from mild brownish discoloration to severe pitting and irregularity of crown cementum may also be stained yellowish brown so that's all about turner's hypoplasia now let's see what is syphilitic hypoplasia so syphilitic hypoplasia in patients with syphilis so most commonly the involved teeth are the maxillary and mandibular permanent incisor maxillary and mandibular incisors and the first molars so maxillary and mandibular incisors which is known as hutchinson's incisors hutchinson's incisors whereas the molars has got many names that is mulberry molars or moon molars or faunus molars so this is all hypoplastic cases the hutchinson's incisors as you see the picture here the upper central incisor are screw driver shaped mesial and the distal surfaces of the crown are tapering and converging towards the incisal edge rather than towards the cervical so incisal edge is also notched you can see on the incisal edge the cause being absence of central tubercle or calcification center that is why that notch is present whereas the mulberry molars or moon molars or faunus molars so crown of first molar in congenital syphilis is affected so the enamel of occlusal third appears to be arranged in a agglomerate mass or globule rather than well formed cusp as you see the picture so it is like a agglomerate mass or globule it is not like cusp as you usually seen on the occlusal surface of molars so this crown is narrower on occlusal surface than at cervical margin so that is the uh, two peculiar features of syphilitic that is a congenital syphilitic patients hutchinson's incisors and mulberry molars so question might come separately as what is hutchinson's incisors or mulberry molars or moon molars or faunus molars so there are other reasons uh, for the hypoplasia such as hypocalcemia or birth injury and the fever Uh, fluorosis fluorosis are mentioned in detail uh, in other videos so these two are very commonly asked uh, short notes so hope you understood this two 
small short notes that will come up with a new topic in the industry and more. Thank you.